Second, uh, the GMO industry likes to talk about engineering, you know, so that you think, ah, oh, yeah, it's really smart, they know what you're doing, you know, how things are connected. An engineer building a house or something in a lab, you know, they really know how things work, you know, and you can see it, it's transparent, it's clear, you know, so it works, it doesn't break down. When you build a house or something, or a bridge, you know, spanning a canyon. So the GMO industry, back then in the 80s, where they were really thinking like Playmobil people, you know, not understanding how complex nature and the universe is, they thought that the gene sequence, like the order of genes on a DNA spiral, you know, like Lego bits, you know, that would determine how the gene functions. So they felt, okay, I'm just going to replace a blue one with a yellow one, and then I know and I can control what the difference will be. But one knows already that this is totally not the case, and we know this for like 10 or 20 years. Fact is, all these gene sequence bits, they interact in the most crazy, uh, invisible, super complex way and they are not fixed, they change, genes transform. Even strong emotional experiences can change your genes. <laughs> so, it's all a super interactive thing and it's happening at an invisible micro level and many parts of the genes just start acting in very specific situations that may only appear in three or five years. <laughs> so they have no clue. They have no clue. That's why until today they haven't come up with a proper, real, genetically modified, enhanced, better plant. There is nothing salt-resistant, higher, enriched with lots of vitamins or something out there. The only thing they achieved to do was to shoot into that gene sequence. And it's called shooting because they don't know where it goes. It doesn't matter. They just shoot one of these BT things, you know, that are resistant to poison. So they shoot that into the sequence of the plant, of the seed. And thereby this plant becomes resistant to poison. To their specific poison that they're selling. It's not that the plant now grows bigger for bigger yields. Or grows more seeds for bigger yields. No. They haven't achieved any of that. That's way too complex for them. They don't understand it. It's only they put this defense mechanism against their poison in it. And then indirectly, if you sow it, and if you're in regions where normally lots of bollworms or milkweed would come over and um, kill the plants, you know, there they can spray the poison like crazy to get rid of those little animals and wild savage plants, and thereby they can then harvest a little bit more, okay? But there's nothing genius about it. So and that is why the GMO industry mostly is about selling the poison. They're making money on selling the poison, the Roundup Ready in general, you know? So this is well explained, but they're not clever, it's not engineering, it's not kick-ass Einstein scientists sitting in those labs, you know, it's very simple people who think they're incredibly uh, cool, but they're not. So, Vandana Shiva, who is one of those real scientists, you know, holistic, global level, well recognized, you know, and she's against that stuff, she explains that in a proper scientific language, you know, how genes are interacting. We know all that, but for 10, 20 years, uh, the mainstream media, they are all failing, the governments pushing GMOs are failing, the institutions and foundations like the Bill and Melinda, Melinda Gates Foundation who are pushing that, they are all failing, they don't understand proper science. <laughs>